Hey, this is Nate here. Suppose you have a game set up in Game Maker with a grid-based movement system, and everything's working great, and the pathfinding allows the player to go around obstacles, but you want to actually be able to illustrate where they can move within their limited movement range without the player having to mouse over every square to check if it's valid or not. And we can solve that with just a recursive function that's going to draw each of these within the limited movement range. So to make this happen, we're going to create what's called a recursive function. And that function is first going to be called at the position of the player. And if this cell is occupied by the MP grid, the function will terminate right away. Uh, if it's open, it will then check if this cell has been visited yet or not by the recursive function. And if it has not been visited, it'll draw its sprite. And that's whatever sprite you send to the original function. After that, it'll subtract from a range value. And if that range value is still greater than or equal to zero, it will continue to call the same function on the adjacent squares, and it'll pass on that range value as it goes. And that's why it's called a recursive function, because it's recursively calling itself. Uh, that'll repeat, and this will propagate out. And as it does, that range value will get smaller and smaller. And eventually, it'll hit negative 1 on these squares, and it'll terminate and not continue. Also, if any of these, of course, these MP grid squares are in range, suppose you had one here, it would also terminate. And that'll, what that'll do is represent exactly where the player can move within the MP grid and whatever movement range you, you give it. In order to start this function, we do need to use a separate function. We'll just call it the starter function for now. And what the starter function does is it's going to recall do the first call of the recursive function at the player's position or whatever x y you give it and before it does so it's going to create a, another grid and it's going to be we'll just call it visited and this is where each recursive function can check if this has been visited or not and it can also compare the range value so that if it sees a range that's higher or equal to whatever the current range is it can also terminate and this is what keeps the recursive function from basically looping over itself and causing kind of an infinite loop that'll never end and then this grid here is just passed in to a argument to the recursive function and then when this recursive function calls the four other directions so it's going to call itself four other times it then also passes on the visited argument as well that way they're all using the same grid and they don't loop over themselves and it creates an accurate representation of what's going on so the first function I'm gonna create is the actual starter function that calls the first instance of the recursion it's and I'm gonna call it MP grid draw move range it's gonna take a sprite argument an image index of that sprite then the X and Y within the MP grid, the grid itself, and then whatever range you want to represent uh, by this function. Uh, this function is going to use two static variables, so that they, you don't really need to recreate them over and over, which will be the visited grid and the size. The initial size will be zero. And then every time this is called, it'll check if the size has changed, so it's going to find the new size, and that's going to be the range given times two plus one after that if the size is different it will resize the grid and after that regardless of whether it's been resized or not you're going to clear the grid to negative one that way it represents nothing has been visited thus far and then finally it's going to call the recursive version of this function and we put these double underscores just to signify um, at the beginning of the function name that hey you should never call this function directly it should be called by this that way it's set up correctly and it passes on all the same arguments from the original except it adds on to it the visited uh, grid and the start position which the X and Y will be the same it'll just be start start next will be the actual recursive function itself and here it is and the first thing it needs to check as mentioned when I was going over in one note is if this current cell is occupied return and just end that recursion right there after that it's going to check the current cost at the visited grid where it's at and if that 
cost is greater than or equal to its current range. That means another instance of the recursion already got here and it can just terminate right away because there's no reason to trace back on itself. And that's essentially what prevents, you know, any kind of infinite loops or, you know, stack overflow. Then after that, this means it hasn't been visited. And if nothing's been drawn here yet, it checks and it draws the sprite that's been assigned at the snap to the cell on the MP grid. And this is why you want to use a sprite that's the same size as the actual MP grid cells. So it fits right there. Uh, after that, it's going to record its actual range to visited that way when another recursion comes and sees this it's going to just terminate and it's not going to continue to loop upon itself then it's going to subtract from its range because it's moving to on to the next cells and if the range actually is negative one that means we've gotten to the end and it's done otherwise it's going to call the actual recursion on the four adjacent cells so we have the left the right the uh, bottom and the top right like that and as you can see we just add one or subtract one from the xy uh, and the the visited xy coordinate uh, after that that's all it for the recursion function and there's one other function here i like to create and this is mp grid draw move range at pixel because at the top we did this version that uses the xy within the grid but a lot of the time you want to give it just the actual pixel and all it is is a wrapper function that right here does some inter integer division based on the cell width and that's of course the sprite width and the sprite height and that way you can give it you know room coordinates instead of having to fiddle with whether uh, keeping track of whatever the grid cell size is now i still have it the project running right here and as you can see it does exactly what we want it to navigates nicely shows exactly where the player can go and the code for this will also be available in a paste bin link in the description and if you like videos like this and tutorials that give little quick solutions just feel free to like and subscribe to help me out and thank you for watching